Okay, welcome back. This is still the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Uh, this is covering Unit 3, Section 3.C, centrif Centrifugal Force, which is in the Circular Motion and Gravitational, okay? This is the third page, but this is the second part. Here, I'm covering Part E and Part F, all right? In a few short sentences, explain what happens if the value of mv squared r is greater than the value of mu s over f n, all right? So... If they said, this is what it looks like mathematically based on this statement, okay? If mv squared over r is greater than mu s f n, all right? What does this mean, okay? This is the friction for, this is the friction force. Right. This is the friction force. Okay. This is a friction force because look, mu s, and this again is static because it's mu s of the friction force. What you have here, this is the what do we call that from the first part? Uh, that is your centripetal force. So this is your centripetal force okay because all right okay so if this is true centripetal force is what greater than okay then the uh, coefficient of friction which provide the centripetal force need to keep the truck going in the desired circle all right so let me show you here's the turn okay here's the turn of the car all right All right, so originally here's the car, right? And it keeps going, all right? Here, pushing it in is uh, centripetal the force, all right? Then, originally, imagine uh, imagine the acceleration, uh, the velocity is going forward, right? Okay. So there is a force that is act, uh, so there, there, it wants to go forward, right? It wants to go, it wants to go straight because that's where its momentum is, okay? because that's where its momentum is going. It's going forward, so it's going forward. But here, a centripetal force is causing it to turn. But what happens if the force, right, if the force here is greater than the force of friction, right, will it cause it to turn? No, it would not cause it to turn, right? Because here, the force of friction is so great Right, the force of friction here is sorry. The force of friction is not strong enough to hold on to the centripetal force. Okay, so here it's not strong enough. So this force is not strong enough and causes the car to slide off. All right, it's going to slide off, okay? All right, so hold on. If this doesn't make sense, I have a calculation for you, okay? Watch this, all right? So here's the idea, all right? To make you go in a circular path, the seat, right, the friction or the door of the car, directly contact, exerts a force on you. The car must also have a force exerted on you towards the center of the curve right here. If it is to move in the curve on a flat road, the force is supplied by friction between the tires and the pavement. Again, boom. On a flat road, the force is supplied by friction between the tires and the pavement. And this is the what? Force exerted on you. So the centripetal force is supplied by the frictional force. Okay. All right. Do you see that? force of friction is in the same direction. Do you see how it's pointing 
towards the center. The centripetal, uh, the force of friction is pointing inwards, which is in the same direction as the centripetal uh, force, right? So, all right. So, let's take a look on the calculation. All right. So. This is a hundred, a thousand kilogram car is rounding a curve, right? And the road's radius is 50 meters at a speed of 54 meters per second. Okay, here's what it looks like in kilometers. Okay, will the will the car follow the curve or will it skid? Assuming a the pavement is dry with this coefficient and b the pavement is ice. All right, here's the approach. The force on the car are gravity mg and the normal force. The car will follow the curve right here, if the maximum static friction force is greater than the mass times the centripetal acceleration, okay? Again, the car will follow the curve if the max, maximum static coefficient is greater than the mass times the centripetal acceleration, okay? So the first part here, what all they did here is calculate the um, force normal, right? So this is just the force normal, right? Why? Because they're going to need to do the calculations, right? So here, the in the horizontal distance, the only force is friction. And we must compare it to the force needed to produce the centripetal acceleration to see if it's sufficient. The net horizontal force required to keep the car moving in a circle. around the curve um, is defined here, right? So this is the formula for centripetal acceleration, okay? Here's the mass, here's the velocity, and here's the radius, okay? This right here is the um, centripetal acceleration. Okay, or the centripetal force, right? Because again, it has that acceleration. Good. So, right here. Okay. Now, let's see if the force of friction is it. So here is the static coefficient. Okay. This is the this is when the friction force is 0 0.60. Okay. And you calculate it by just timesing it by the force normal and it equals to 5,880. Here, if you want to see the whole calculation, okay? Now, let's take a look. The force in typical is this. This is the force, this is the friction force. And the first part is when it is what? Uh, drive pavement, right? This is the frictional force um, on dry pavement. All right. Okay. So it's 5,880. Okay. Will the car turn? Yes, it will turn. Why? Because mu s of fn is what? Greater than the mass squared over r. Right. So the f force of the friction is greater than the force centripetal, so this what causes the turn. Okay. Now, here, this is if it's on a friction force on ice. Do you see how here the mu is smaller? This is the ice. Okay. Right. So. If we do the calculation, it's 2,450. Here, this is mu static fric friction times the force normal, which is less than the centripetal force. Here, this is cause the car to skid, right? This does mean it doesn't turn. Okay, because there isn't enough friction um, for the tires to hold on to the road. Okay, good. So this is the calculation. And here's the example problem that you can do 
and here's the exact details to explain this part okay all right next all right which turn turning left or right requires the truck to slow down more in order to make the turn uh, safely okay so what is the difference between this turn and this turn okay assuming the velocities are the same okay we would say that the left turn the r is greater it's a greater r here let's say the r this is the right turn right so look how big the r is right here's the center here's the r right the right turn uh, i should have made that orange okay so the right turn is a smaller r right r is smaller r okay all right so okay so think about it right the centripetal force is defined by mv squared over r and again okay like what we said here so let me just even just grab this for you Which term requires the truck to slow down more, right? Okay. All right. So what happens if you want this? Let's say we want this equals to F, right? Okay, F, R, okay? And the R gets bigger, all right? So let's just do it, okay? What happens if the R uh, is doubled, okay, to R, okay? Look at how it changes the equation. So becomes two here. Fr is equal to one half mv squared over two r, right? So, okay. If the r is smaller, right? Let's say, uh, sorry, this is bigger. So let's say. So hold on, give me a second. All right, so. the one half here okay so if r if r doubles let me see r doubles okay. if the radius doubles the force centripetal you're going to feel is half you're going to feel it less right so you're not going to feel that big of a jerk right you're not going to feel being pushed in as much okay so but what about the v so here the FR is going to be, you're going to feel it less. But what about the V? Okay. The V is also going to be what? Smaller. Right? Because it's on the same side. Okay. The reason why it has to be smaller is because you're trying to, and to get the same amount of force, you would have to try to get rid of the one half, right? So it also has to go down as, um, sorry. So if the velocity, if the R is doubled, okay, the R is also has to be doubled. Yeah, because you see it's one half. So it also has to be doubled. So if R is doubled, V has to also get bigger, okay? So you're going to have to, you're going to turn, uh, the velocity is faster, okay? If R is half or R is less, okay, the FR is you're going to feel it more, okay? Because FR is equal to MV squared over R, and let's say it's less, right? No, it's half. It's doubled. Yep. So this is one half. Okay. So this becomes two mv squared over r. Right. Okay. So you're gonna feel it more, and the velocity it has to get smaller. Okay. 
because the velocity has to be smaller because the radius gets smaller to balance out this equation. Okay, so, okay, here you go. All right, good. So remember this ideal. You could work through the math if you would like to see it. But here, force, um, force centripetal. If R doubles, F R is you're going to feel it more because you're going to have more of it. Uh, so V also has to be bigger. Okay. If R is cut in half, the radius also is going to be smaller, and you are going to feel uh, it more. Okay, so that's why a tighter turn, you're going to feel more up against the car. All right. So um, I wanted to talk about this f idea of the uh, static friction and um, the rotational friction. Okay, so here we talk about the car turning, the wheels turning, and here the wheels are locked and it's skid. All right. So in a car, it's called an anti-lock system. Okay, so here, right, the possibility of skidding is actually worse than the wheel locking, right? It's worse if the wheels lock when the brakes are applied too hard. When the tires are rotating, right here, the static friction exists. Again, when tires are rotating, static friction exists because the tire is relative to the road that is on the truck. But if the wheels are locked, it stops rotating, the tires skid. So this is wheels lock do you see how it skid Sh straight but here if it is rotating right if it is rotating the wheels rotate right you see it will actually have a better brake okay so there you go here this meme should give you a better understanding of um so which one's better for your car? This is why new cars have the ABS system, right? This prevents the wheel from locking up. So this idea, okay? You want to have ABS. You want your wheels to keep rotating when you apply the brakes too hard so you can still use static friction, right? Because static friction has a better, um, has a higher coefficient than the kinetic friction which is which is smaller okay so think about this remember this is when mu s um and this is mu k and remember that mu s is always great uh, is always greater than mu k okay so there you go this is the second half right which talks about the uh, the friction force, how it acts on the centripetal force. Okay, there you go. Here are all your notes if you would like to see it. Again, here's the problem done if you would like to see it. Okay, and here is the explanation for the last part. Good. All right. So there you go.